Welcome to GC Cars, my name is Eric and this is a 2021 Ford Mustang GT. And ever since I was, uh, well, about this tall, cute little Eric, I mean, I'm still cute, but you get the idea. Um, I love Mustangs. I really love Mustangs. By far my favorite car out on the road, whenever I saw one, which growing up in Germany, you didn't really see them that often, maybe like once a month, if you're lucky. Um, I got like super excited. I always wanted to look at them. I wanted to listen to them. I just, I loved Mustangs. And in 2015, Ford finally started to bring them out to Europe, sell them there. So you kind of started seeing them a little more, which uh, was to my pleasure, obviously. But at that time I was 15, so I couldn't even drive one. And then a couple years later, started my automotive journalism in Germany. You know the story now. Um, I got like this close to driving a Mustang, this, this close, but then things didn't work out. So until now, I haven't driven a Mustang and it's, I'll be honest guys, it was on my bucket list, like on my, not on my automotive bucket list, which is, there's a bunch of cars in that, but on my life bucket list. Like I, before I die, I want to have driven a Mustang GT. And here we are, here we are. Now you might be saying, hey, wait, 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 wait a second, Eric. Like as an automotive journalist, should you be a little more unbiased? And that that's a very good remark. Like A plus for you in the back there. Good good job. Um, but I can assure you, first of all, the first step in reducing your bias is to acknowledge your bias, which I've just done. So I've declared that to you, right? We, we, we're good. And number two is, as always, as everything should be, no, the other way around. I should be perfectly balanced as everything should be. There we go. Almost missed up the quote. Um, no, like, trust me, I, I can be harsh on any vehicle, even though I really like the Mustang. I think, I, I'm confident I can still give it a fair assessment. And also, it's a, it's a rear-wheel drive V8 manual Mustang, so uh, it's like a sports car. How negative can it be? We'll find out. As always, we take a look at the exterior, the interior, and then we're going to drive it, which is going to be very fun and audibly very pleasing, even uh, for you. So looking at this, obviously it's a convertible. That, that, that's, that's pretty plainly visible for you, I think. Uh, it's a convertible and we got the California Special package on here, which kind of gives you a little, you know, bits and bots here. So first of all, we got, instead of the center Mustang badge, we have it offset and it's a different badge. It's the badge you usually used to find on the V6 Mustang. Um, so we have that right here. We have different 19 inch wheels. We have this sticker, like this, this stripe here, the GTCS stripe, California Special. Uh, running down and then we have these fake uh, side vents which I'll be honest kind, kind of tacky like you can buy them aftermarket I just don't really think they look good I don't think they work with the lines and I just I don't really like them but some people do so whatever um, of course this is side profile this is just we got a really long hood we got a great side, uh, dash to axle ratio it just looks awesome the front end so aggressive like with the with the refresh the s550 this s550 generation uh the refresh that came in 2018 obviously made it a lot more aggressive didn't like it at first but that's kind of like always the case um the 2015 to 2017 will probably age a little better i think because that's very modern very aggressive and that'll probably in 10 20 years will not look on it uh, back on it as like as favorably i think but right now this looks freaking awesome i love this certain angles if you go a little lower can look a a bit weird but no like this looks so good i love how the tail is just so aggressive we get our fake vents on the hood it just looks mm. yes 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 but one more thing we got the rear obviously and we have our spoiler up top here then we have the gt on the deck that just says california special next to it in red it looks great we have the greatest taillights in the whole industry like no other car's tail is as good as this and of course we have also the greatest indicators the sequential mustang indicator lights to all of you in europe i am very sorry that you don't get them Sucks, uh, it sucks to get that one. It sucks to get the Euro toilets. These ones are amazing, I love it. And of course we got our exhaust, it's just, ah, oh, it looks, looks good, I love how it looks. I love how it looks. The Velocity Blue is the color, by the way, which shines very nicely. I'm more of a fan of yellowish. There's a couple years ago, they had the triple yellow, which I really liked, but it's nice. Also, we have a few Mustang badges, like here in the headlight, and it's kind of littered around the car. But, um, I think everybody knows and everybody kind of agrees that the Mustang looks pretty good. Just like the Camaro and the Challenger also look really good. Well, Camaro is a little more, a little more, uh, I don't know, hit and miss here and there right now, according to some people. But I think everybody likes the Mustang. 
but let's take a look inside. I love the chimes in Fords. I think they sound very nice and very pleasing. They're not like annoying or anything. But let's talk about the interior of the Mustang GT here. And layout wise, it is really good. Everything is super usable. Everything is very nice spots. And the, the seating position itself is really good. The pedals are in a nice spot. You can configure the steering wheel. Great, you have a manual handbrake, which is perfect. And the manual itself also, everything is in a really, really good spot. The position of the manual and the position of the cup holders will lead to some interference because if you have like anything that's just a tiny bit taller than the cup holders themselves, you will bump into that. So you might have to shift in a bit of a weird spot, but there's really nothing they can do about that because so that's kind of a given uh, mechanically. They can't really put that different and it's not big of an issue. But I want to talk about materials because materials, quite frankly, aren't that great. The soft, uh, the touch spots, the touch spots are pretty good. We got this leather steering wheel, we got this fake suede, and like even here and on the center console, you got pretty soft materials, which feels nice. But once you venture out beyond the touch spots, or like even around the switch gear, you get very, very scratchy plastic. It's just, uh, it's not that great. This one is softer, it's like soft touch plastic, but it's just, I don't know, it's not as not as nice. It's not as nice as it might be in the competition. Then we got the upgrade dash which has the carbon fiber design on it. Just a few more things about the interior. First of all, we got of course the Mustang badge here, which just looks like a California special. It just looks really, really nice. The seats, very comfortable. Like I said, the seating position is great. Seated and ventilated too. They're very, very comfortable. Like I said, it's, you're very comfortable in the Mustang at all times. The SYNC 3 system we have here is pretty easy to use once you get used to it. Definitely a little outdated from the looks. Uh, Sync 4 is a lot better than that, but the Mustang just doesn't have it yet and probably won't get it until you have a new generation. But it has Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, so you're pretty much good on that. And as we have the premium, we do have the upgraded infotainment, uh, the upgraded gauge cluster, the digital 12.3 inch gauge cluster, which is very fast, very clear, good contrast, good colors, and it looks very, very nice. It is fast to react. You have different layouts from your regular, you have sport, you have track. I like track the most because it has like the tachometer just really big across the, across the uh, screen. It looks really nice. I love it. Funny thing is when you go into the track gauges, it tells you only for track use, but it still has navigation and lane keep assist systems on the screen. So I was like, do you really? Do you really? No. <laughs> One more thing, of course, um, this is airplane inspired, right? So you have the switch here down here, which are these metal switches, which or uh, metal or plastic looking switches, which are kind of nice, really nice to use. Just wish they would go down because if you scroll through your modes and you miss yours, you have to go like up five more times to go back down again to that one. So just like to scroll through it, but they look very nice. And then obviously if you have the analog gauges, the speedometer says like ground speed. It's pretty cool, pretty neat little details. But will it be comfortable in the back? Well, we'll, we'll, we'll figure that out. We'll find that out. Da da da, da da da. Yeah, that's gonna be a lot more fun. <laughs> Okay, so first of all, we want to just take out the seatbelt here and then we'll flip it up and then it's pretty easy to get in. Just hold on here, climb over and you are in the back seats and instantly what you will notice is that um, they're very tight, very, very tight, kind of comfy actually. But let's, let's put the seat back and see how that goes. And I'm not the tallest, right? So I'm five foot seven. So this is in my driving position. I can sit behind myself reasonably well. I don't have any foot room really. I'm just like touching the at the bottom of the seat. I can't really move around in here. It's just, it's very cramped. So if you're a little taller than me, or you sit behind somebody a little taller than me, you won't have any space. But that's that's a known factor. Like this is an emergency second row. You don't really plan on using it. It's better to just have two seats and two more just in case. And if you don't have face passengers really, uh, this is great storage in addition to the trunk. But no, let's get out of this. But, come on, there you go. Let's take a look at the trunk. Hello, today we will take a closer look at the details of the 2021 Ford Mustang GT Convertible. First of all, starting with the trunk. The trunk has a capacity of 11.4 cubic feet, which makes it 
usable for most parts. But like my colleague said, if you need more storage, there's always the back seat. Now, let's get out of this. Luckily, I had gymnastic classes for six years in elementary school. First, put our feet up there. Now, one and two. Graceful like an angel. We can close this. But furthermore, we want to take a look at some of the quality issues. Quality issues, not tissues, issues with the Ford Mustang GT. Let's get started on that. Now that we have spoken about the trunk, we can talk about the front seats. My colleague has already told you about how comfortable these are, but there is one more thing we need to talk about. I shall demonstrate by moving this seat forward. I assure you that noise is not coming from my digestive system. Let's move it backwards. What is happening is that the seat is actually a little too big for the center console and they had to squeeze it in. If I go forward again, <laughs> I'm sorry, I can't stay in, in character with that. <coughs> this noise can even be replicated by going forward and backwards repeatedly. Not funny at all. There is one more issue though we will have to talk about. I shall reposition the camera for that. To show the last demonstration of lacking quality in this Mustang, let's put up the soft top. Do you notice the issue? I can help you. This window doesn't close. I have tried multiple things, but it doesn't close. Now, I have researched a little bit and apparently this is a common issue with the soft tops. What do you have to do to fix it? Well, we have to use technology. Well, we do not, I will tell you. All you do is you open the door and you pull it. Yes. That's how you do it. Now it's closed. That was a demonstration of the quality of this Ford Mustang GT. Let's continue with the video and get driving. Enough of what we've all been waiting for out here on the road in the 2021 Ford Mustang GT. With the roof up for now because of sound, but we're gonna drive it down with it down later. Of course, we started with the launch, so we're gonna put it into track mode, which turns off traction control, and we're gonna have some fun. Of course, we gotta shift ourselves because well, it's manual. <laughs> okay, 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 <laughs> okay. She's fast, she's fast, she's fast. You didn't know that. I think you just moved, did it? Yeah, she moved you. <laughs> when the car is so fast, I even moves my camera around. Anyhow, um, <laughs> Yeah, so uh, we got the 5.0 Coyote in here. So the five liter naturally aspirated V8 from Ford, uh, 460 horsepower and 420 pound feet of torque. And man, with this active exhaust we have in here, does she sound good? Ah. Oh. Wonderful, 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 wonderful. She sounds so good, and even at lower rev ranges, 2,000 RPM. Builds and builds and builds. No, this is a widely praised engine, very widely praised engine, because first of all, it's tough. Like, you can build this up to a lot of horsepower, but also, 
the rest to 7400 RPM and peak horsepower is at 7000 RPM. So you can just really rev it out. It sounds amazing. It's a great engine. I really, really enjoyed it. It's just so much fun. And of course, it is so much more fun if you instead of the 10 speed automatic, which I'm sure is great, have the six speed manual that we have here in this Mustang. Just we have active rev matching, which can be turned off easily in the menu. But like this, Sometimes it's nice to not fully floor it and just enjoy how the revs build and the sound that comes with it. It's just like this very distinct Mustang sound. That's very, that's very cool what the, what the Ford sound engineers did with the Mustangs because every single Mustang V8 has a very, has this very this, this distinct Mustang sound to it. And it's not just the, the 5.0 we have in here. It's also the race cars. It's in the 5.2 liter uh, Predator V8 in the uh in the gt500 and also in the 5.2 liter flatline crank voodoo v8 in the gt350 that has a very distinct sound yes but it still has the mustang has this very very distinct kind of a chewbacca-ish sound i guess i have a full sound pure sound video just this car five minutes around like roughly five minutes pure sound top right if you just want to listen to this but no it just sounds So good, so good, so good. But yeah, this manual, um, this is often kind of getting criticized as manual because it's actually the MT82 and the Mach 1 and the GT350 with the Tramex six speed, which is supposedly a lot better. But the thing is the way this car is specced with a convertible, we don't have any performance packages or anything like that. This is actually a really good transmission because it is actually surprisingly easy to drive. You know what? Young guy, Mustang GT. This is a combination that didn't always go perfectly along. And there's a couple of Facebook videos that probably all of you know of uh, things that might have occurred with some of these people. So I had a bit of a healthy respect for this Mustang. Okay, I was like, you know what? Don't be stupid about it. So I kind of inched my way forward. I was careful about it. And I learned that it's actually, as long as you're not too stupid, it's actually pretty, it's pretty easy to drive. First of all, the manual, yes, that's true. The criticism is true. It's not the most direct. It is not the most engaging or sporty one, but it is very good for cruising. And this, it just fits the convertible we have here, I think. Uh, it's, it's very good for cruising. It is very comfortable. And there's so many ad, like features that make it easier to drive if you're not that used to a manual. And we have active rev matching. We have hill start assist, all that. So really it becomes very, very easy to drive, but it's just so much more enjoyable. It truly is so much more enjoyable. God, I love this. I love this Coyote motor with the, with the manual assist. Chef's kiss. So good. No, it, it is just very fun. I drive it right now, like I said, we're here in track mode. My mode, which you can set up, is normally Sport Plus with the track exhaust. That's the only thing I kind of really changed from, from track mode. And you, of course, have the different gauges. I really like the track gauges we have right here. But as long as you have a healthy respect for this Mustang, I don't think it is too big of an issue if you're not that great with manuals. Don't floor around corners in first gear. Don't be a stupid idiot. Because otherwise this happens. <laughs> don't be a stupid idiot unless you know what you're doing and have fun in this. Have fun in this. This is so much fun. Like I said, it's not that intimidating. It is very predictable. Yes, it does oversteer. Like, you, like I just demonstrated. Purely fine for scientific reasons, obviously. Yeah, as long as you have a healthy respect for it, you inch your way towards it, you can really get used to that. And of course, if you don't have any room to screw up, don't, don't do stuff that could lead to you screw up, screwing up. The manual introduces more possibility for you to screw up, but it also introduces so much more engagement and I really, really love this manual. It's so much fun, but like I said, it's easy to drive. And this, it, it suits the character because this convertible, it is, like I said, geared towards cruising. This is not as sporty as a Mustang gets. If you wanna have a sporty Mustang, we're not talking Mach 1 or Shelby here, you can get it as a coupe, first of all, that's more rigid. Then you can get a performance package one or performance package two, and you can get the Magna Ride suspension, which if you have all this, you have a new suspension, you have cup twos, you have just a way more <laughs> sports car oriented car. This one, like I said, even the, 
even the front end it's not as grippy as you might expect as you think like oh it's, it's not the most engaging front end there's a lot of body roll in this but like i said this G convertible is set up towards cruising and it does uh, does that really well and you'll see that especially later on when we put down the top now in terms of um in terms of steering and steering feel like i said first of all it does it's it reacts pretty quickly but it, it takes a while to kind of like you know it's, it's not like the sportiest ever but it's it's good it's like don't get me wrong it's good but it's just saying you know, it's like don't expect this to be like blowing you away in terms of how reactive the steering is it also doesn't really have that much steering feel to it you don't really feel the road too much through the wheel but what you will notice if you drive somewhere with the street cars um, it'll just suck up those train tracks and just steer you into the into the opposite lane so you have to be a bit mindful of that um, I have it in sport all the time I like the I like the heft it has then and the resistance comfort is way too sensitive comfort is just way way too on the edge for me and normal is okay but I just I, I found sport to be more fitting with the character of this Mustang or at least the way I wanted to drive the Mustang here that I, I like the sport steering a bit more but let's talk a little bit about um, just general driving I know it is all fun to just do this and just do this and just enjoy this car it sounds so good oh, it's just, let me just let's just rough through it short uh, slowly like even if you just drive it without floor in it it's just so enjoyable and I remember when I had the E63 I said the E63 sounds good but it has nothing on a naturally aspirated American V8 this is what I mean this has so much character throughout the rev range really it sounds good from idle to 7400 rpm it sounds good every single time and this coyote also reacts so quickly to your inputs it's really nice like I can do it by just pressing on the clutch a little bit and show you how it reacts it reacts so quickly such an instant response which is nice because especially you know without having any turbos it also just just like throttle responses there so nice to drive uh, but i wanted to talk about regular driving first of all the suspension this is a very tough, rough road as you just noticed it is very comfortable honestly seating position is great the seats are very nice really nice and bolstered so i'm in my like i i'm stuck in the seat pretty much like not as in i can't move but i won't move sideways at all like my my waist is just locked in place and i'm very comfortable and even these rough roads here yes I feel vibrations I, I see the car vibrating around me but myself I am very comfortable and in terms of noise this this top here honestly as long as, long as you pull up the window <laughs> the rear quarter window as long as you do that it is actually also pretty quite nice and quiet so if you want to have it a little quieter you can have that did I do that no no I, I drove down with the top the top up only once really once and every single time even at night when it was like 12 degrees outside I had the heated seats on AC blasting heat on me and I was still driving on the highway <laughs> with the top down just enjoying it because it is so enjoyable and we're gonna do this here in a second um, actually you know we can do it right now let's do it right now because we have to be pretty much stationary three miles an hour or five kilometers an hour is when we can put the top down but we have to remove the GoPro first there we go all right we have to remove the GoPro because um, otherwise the windows can't go down and also I'm going to still concept from the straight pipes which is if you like the video you can only subscribe now while we're doing the way while we're putting down the top so as soon as the top down you can't subscribe anymore so subscribe in the bell now four five six seven eight nine nine seconds I hope you subscribed I'll give you another chance at the end and now it's just so much more enjoyable It just sounds so good with the top down. <laughs> I love it. It just sounds so much better even. Um, but no, with the top down, there's such a good cruiser. I love cruising like this. Uh, just if you roll over, uh, to don't have your hand on top of the A-pillar. Very bad idea. Uh, but this is, this, is, like, this is such a comfortable position to cruise in. And no, I just enjoyed this so much. This is, this is an amazing cruiser. This is an amazing cruiser. That's what it's built for. And that's what you want. And I think... Oh, real quick, tack. We have adaptive cruise control, 
which you obviously have to shift yourself because it's manual and it doesn't work under 20 kilometers an hour, but it's very nice working. We have, um, we have engine, what are you doing? <laughs> it sounds so mean. It sounds, you're sliding forward again. It sounds so mean up top. It sounds so mean. Oh man, <clears throat> good headlights. We have uh, adaptive fat lights, uh, automatic high beams, I mean, and we have collision alerts. You, you really have a lot of tech. So this is really such a good daily cruiser. If, you just, if you're looking for a cruiser, this is fantastic. But I think with that, we can send it off to the final thoughts and have a last look at this Mustang GT. Okay, final thoughts on the 2021 Ford Mustang GT Premium Convertible. In the beginning, I said that ever since I was a small child, I, I had a fascination for Mustangs. I wanted to drive a Mustang for a long, long, long time. But the saying also goes, never meet your heroes. Because for all these years, you're kind of like interested in either a person or in a car. You kind of build this imagination. You kind of think about, oh, how would it be like to meet the person or drive that car? And how could it be? And you just kind of build it, build it, build the imagination and the hype around it. And then once you actually drive it, it just, falls short of your overhyped expectations. But that doesn't always apply. No, it doesn't, it doesn't. Yeah, no, I had a lot of fun. That's, that's a great car, I loved it. <laughs> like, um, I'll be honest, this convertible wouldn't be exactly how I would spec my Mustang. This is the like, kind of cruiser spec. Um, I would probably go for a coupe with either the performance package one or two. If I had the money, it would be a Mach one or I would buy a used GT350 um, because they just kind of suit my style a little more. But for what it is, this is just a ton of fun. Yes, for $63,590 Canadian, the interior and the quality isn't great. That, that's true. And that's something you have to know before getting into one. But I also said, and I keep saying that, that I won't knock the car for bad interior if everything else around it just kind of makes it seem like a more expensive car. In terms of you, like, if you would have a nicer interior in here, this wouldn't be a $63,000 car, which don't get me wrong, it's still a lot of money, but then you would need to pay 70 or 80 grand for it. And this way you get cheaper into this drivetrain because, oh my God, this Coyote engine with a six-speed manual is just fabulous. Like, it is so good. And it, I had so many smiles on my face driving this car. You just put the top down, put the track exhaust on. If you get a Mustang, get the active exhaust and you just roll your own gears. And the, the, this engine just builds power so progressively it revs pretty high with 7400 rpm and it sounds amazing it is such a fun car to drive dynamically we didn't go to the limits that much just ontario roads make it pretty hard and where you can maybe go for the go for to the limits a little you just want to be a bit more careful because like i said i don't want to end up on facebook but the little dynamic drive on well, the limit driving that i did let's say like that it felt very nice, it felt very controllable. Yes, of course, the rear, it's, it's tail happy. It'll try to come around you, but as long as you can control that a little bit and you anticipate it, it shouldn't be big of an issue. Um, but no, this is, this is fantastic. I thoroughly enjoyed my week. It was so much fun. And it's just like this drivetrain, it's just amazing. And the experience, there's so much character behind it. And yes, while the interior and the quality isn't great, the character more than makes up for it because it has an abundance of that and probably out of all the cars we've had on this channel so far none was as had as much character or as much um what do you call it, flair to it as this mustang gt did i loved it i really loved it and i can't wait to get into another mustang sometime soon be it an ecoboost be it a Mach 1, be it a Shelby, whatever may come in 2022, because I think the 2021 season for sports cars is pretty much over. I'm very excited for that. Anyhow, thank you so, so much for watching. If you liked it, please make sure to subscribe and hit the bell because we upload new reviews every Friday at 11 a.m. Eastern time. And additionally, we do have POV drives where I have a GoPro right on my forehead here. And you can see and hear it, how it is to drive the Mustang and every car review out of the first person. And we got a wide, the wide, wide, variety of things we do but yeah next review is coming next friday 11 a.m thank you so much for watching i hope you liked it and i hope i'll see you in the next one thank you and goodbye